What's up, YouTube? My name's Quickie. Welcome back to the channel. I'm just having to reclamp it. <laughs> Basically, where I put this back clamp in, uh, that is now going to be in the way whilst I'm milling this slot out. This slot is basically for the like the underside of the top. I'll get a picture and show you. But it's the underside of the top of the hanger. Trouble is, this as I'm getting lower, this collet chuck is going to clobber into that. So I need to clamp it somehow so nothing moves. So we're just shoving another clamp in here on the same 3 2 1 block underneath, which would be all right. It'd be fine. Um, and then once he's clamped down, I can pull the other one out. Nothing would have shifted. And we can carry on. But I am getting this done this week. Okay, so I've um, finished off my slot. There's a lovely finish in there as well. I've also counterboard the holes for the mounting bolts. Um, so they're gonna sit like half mil down, just because by the time I deburr the top with my uh, countersink tool or whatever, deburring tool, um, I don't want it to be a, a definite step. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could do in this setup before I go and move it. <laughs> That's what I've got, it's a habit I've got into now. So before I change the setup, I clean all the top of it down so I can see what I'm looking at because there's chips everywhere. I make a brew, I stare at that for like, you know, 10 minutes or so. Um, just because I don't want to have to put this back in this setup and dial everything and locate on everything again because I was stupid enough to shift it in the first place. <laughs> Worst case, it means to get another brew, doesn't it? Um, I think we're okay. I can't think of anything else that I could do in this setup. Because essentially, it's just a case of milling out that slot there, milling the outside and down here as well. And that is it. Apart from the rotary table bit where I'll put the radius on the end. Um, is there anything else? I don't think there is. Right, he's coming out. I've decided, executive decision, he's coming out. Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, it's done now, isn't it? <laughs> right, this is a fair amount of cocking about, but um, I've had all my uh, plates apart. I did just deburr them, literally just tickled them with a with a deburr into, you know, like a countersink tool, just to take any burrs off the holes and clean it, because where you push, where you go through with the drill on the back side, you can get a burr to it. So I've cleaned them all off as best I can. Um, I've tickled all the holes with a countersink just to deburr them. Cleaned it all up and put it back together again. The bed was all cleaned and now I'm just trying to line things up. So the way I've done this, <coughs> it's probably a quicker way. It took me about 20 minutes. 
but basically I've got a big old bit of, what is it? Um, so I've got a big old bit of steel, big heavy bit of steel. Um, but he's basically all flat and square and everything else. So I've had him lined up across here. Um, and then just with a square, I put a, a drill bit in one hole at the end and a transfer punch in the other end. Squared it up like that, clamped it down as best I can. And then it's just been a case of with those two drill bits in place to keep that plate and that plate together, I've just been tapping it and trying to get it so we is all good. So he goes in that hole, he should, if I get it lined up, he should, oh no, too far. He should go in that hole as well, look. So basically with true front and rear, or close enough anyway, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a set of rear sets, it's not, you know, engine components or anything else. It doesn't have to be that precise. So we'll get the other side clamped down now. And that'll all be good. Um, he can go in that one. Whilst I've got you here as well. Um, oh, where's my longer one? Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, whilst I got your attention, I did ask in the last video about the, the Speedo. Should the analog bit of the gauge be RPM or should it read speed? And it's pretty, like everyone's going RPM, definitely RPM, this, that and the other. <laughs> Which I sort of thought people would, because it's, it's quite nice to see it, you know, on the move when you're on it sort of stuff. Um, but I can't remember who it was, but they did drop a comment going, well, that digital reader, that's awful small, isn't it? And it is, I'm guessing... The, the I'm guessing the numbers is going to be something about six mil, something like that. So it ain't very big. Um, but people are saying to have the the needle read the RPM and the the number to be obviously your your miles per hour sort of stuff. Now, in my heart, I say, yeah, absolutely. The needle's got to be RPM, isn't it? It's got to be. Um, but I'm sort of going back to my racing days because with the whole on, on a race bike you don't have a speedo. You don't give a monkey's what speed you're doing. You just try to do it as quick as you can. The only things that you're really worried about is the stopwatch for your lap time and the rev counter. So the rev counter is important because your bike would have been dynoed. So you know at what point you're making good power and where peak power is and therefore where in the rev range you want to stop and all that sort of stuff. Um, just so your bike is always on song and you're doing the best laps possible. Um, thing is, on a road bike, which Asbo is gonna be, you don't really give a monkeys about the RPM. I don't know about you, but when I'm, sh when I'm going through the gears, even if I'm on it, I tend to change gear based on the engine note. I'm never looking at RPMs. So it's different from road to race is what I'm trying to say. And just because of that, and I can't remember who dropped the comment on it, um, but just because of that, I'm thinking that the needle should really be speed. I really do think it should be RPM. Um, now, at the end of the day, um, this isn't going to be my bike. Um, all the people that are chipping in and helping us out, one of them is going to win it. Um, so ultimately, it's, it's essentially, it's your call. It's up to you. Um, I don't mind, as long as it legally reads speed and it's accurate and all that sort of stuff. That's fine as far as MOTs and stuff go. But just for rideability and the ability to just like glance down and see what speed you're doing rather than looking at a 10 mil digit, I'm, I'm thinking it should maybe be the other way around. Um, so, I haven't closed book on it yet. I haven't ordered it yet. Just because I thought I should make mention of this just you know because some of you might change your mind <laughs> so have a think about it because you know once he's done he's done i'm not changing it right what size was that um 16. uh but i need to locate those holes first so because i don't think i did this bit 
I know it's 38 between centres, but I need to locate one of them. Right. These are going to look all right, actually. Right, the time is 25 to 1. Covered in chips again. <laughs> but I need to chip off to be work. I'll be back. I'll be back. I've changed it all again. Not because I cocked up, because I didn't. Um, it's just I'm not doing things in the most efficient way. I was thinking it's quite cool when you get um, a job that lasts a couple of days because you naturally spend time thinking about it and you know how you could do it differently and all that sort of stuff um, and I was thinking last night well there's a couple of troubles that I've had so I've had my 321 blocks underneath all this and one of the things I've been worried about is milling into them um, so I thought okay well do you really need a 321 block underneath it answer no you just put a bit of scrap underneath it and I've got some because this is the second time of having a go at doing these because I drilled holes in the wrong place. So I've just got one of those bits that I cocked up initially as a sacrificial bit underneath and it just means I can mill down into it and I'm really not fussed. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is um, I was thinking I could have set all this up on the rotary table. So I had my rotary table, clamp all that down um, with a sacrificial something or other underneath it, like I've got now. And that way I could just mill it everything in one direction, spin it 65 degrees, and then mill all the rest of it. Which, if I was to do it again, would probably be the way I would do it, I think. Just because that way it's one setup, um, and you, you know, you can just crack on and get it done. I suppose all in all, this is going to take me, if I was just to have full days in here, this would be a two day job for me at the minute, doing it the way that I've been doing it. But I could have cut that down if I just changed my setup a little bit. So um, let's just double check nothing has moved. So he should go in there, which he does. How big's my centres? Um, 88. So if we spin him over here to 88. Come on. <laughs> I hate it when it just jumps like that. Five microns, it's probably close enough. And he goes in there. Right, happy days, we're all sorted. So now I've just got to pick up on that hole um, which, could I do that? Uh, I'm not sure I've got the measurement there. Have I got it on that plane? No, I haven't. Right, I need to pick up on that. Or oh, I just need to mill this lot. I could just have this bit here off, couldn't I? I could. Right.
Oh, I've had an oh crap moment. Bugger. Um, very last pass. So I was set up in, in, in like that little corner, going to come out. Trouble is I had the auto feed engaged the wrong way and it just nudged to the side before I caught it. But it has put a little bit of a, a dip in it. I'm quite impressed the mill actually managed to do it. <laughs> that might be all right. Um, right, let's have all this lot out and see what we've got. I've still got to count the sinkholes and I've got to measure the foot peg actually, because I need to open that hole in the corner. Um, but I think we is basically in. Right. Now I'll show you my cock up. It's not a massive one. Um, this bit here, as you can see, it's just took a little bit out of that corner because we was milling it this way and it's gone that way by like whatever and it's left a little thing like that. It's, it's going to be able to get it dressed out anyway because this is all going to have a chamfer over it and it's not like it's dead skinny or anything else. This is tough as old boots, this. Um, but it's really bloody annoying. Really annoying. Um, so I need to chop that bit there off, round all my edges off, and I need to open this hole out for the foot pegs. So, where's my verniers? Verniers? Verniers. Uh... <coughs> right. I did have one. Is it that one? Yes. Um, 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 so he goes on like that, there's a spacer, and he goes into there, so it's just the size of that, I'm sure it's 10 mil, 10 mil, right, let's um, get these done. So apart from my little faux pas with that power feed incident, <laughs> these are starting to look all right actually. Um, I've countersunk the back of the hanger just for that um, screw to go into. This is my brake master cylinder. So he's going to go on something like that. Obviously this lever is going to get remade or changed or something. Haven't quite decided yet, but this is what we're up to so far. So you just have to imagine that that is going to be rounded off and that is going to be rounded off and so is this one here. Um, that's going to be the next step on the rotary table. But give them a clean up and get rid of all the machining marks and sharp edges and stuff. I think we is in. I think we is in. What's it look like on the bike? Oh, Ooh, it's going to be good, it's going to be good. I'm quite pleased with that. Very, well, not so pleased with that bit, but the rest of it I'm very pleased with. So, um, pom, pom, pom. I ain't going to get the rotary table out now because it's midday. So that's going to have to wait until tomorrow. I could pretty much get them all done in one sitting, I think. 
that shouldn't be too bad. Um, so at the weekend, we should have all these foot pegs and everything else on the bike and in situ. So I can sort my exhaust out and get that running where I want it to run. But, I am happy with this. I am happy with this. I do like machining stuff, it has to be said. Um, apart from that one little cock up, which you're not even gonna see it when it's all dressed up, but the thing I can see it now is there. <laughs> but anyway, um, these is, is gonna turn out good, I think. Um, they're definitely going on the bike for the weekend because at the weekend, I wanna be having a go at the exhaust. So um, it's gonna take me a while to clean Brian up and get the rotary table set up. That ain't gonna happen today because it's gone 12. Um, so I'm gonna be tipping off in a second anyway. However, before I go, two things. First thing is I've got a hole in my roof. I've got a puddle on my bench. There wasn't a puddle there yesterday. It has been hammering down to be fair. Absolutely hammering down. But there's a puddle at the end of my bench and I'm not happy about it. So I'm gonna have to stop off at the office and see if I can get it fixed. And the other thing is scammers. I've got another one. It's like buses, isn't it? You wait for ages and then you get a whole load turn up at the same time. So this week's scammer is, um, well, it's, it's just, it's just advertising really, it's trying to you know, get people go, it's not like the other one. But what happens is, is I upload a video um, and then literally, as soon as it has gone up, I get a comment come in, loving your work, awesome video from start to finish. And I'm thinking, oh, thank you very much. And then the, this is where it comes in. However, in these times of desperate need and you know, economic crisis and blah, 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 it is very important to invest wisely. I think, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. And then as soon as he's done that, there's another fellow with a different foreign name. He chips in and he goes, oh, I couldn't agree more. I use so-and-so for all my investments and they have never let me down. <laughs> and then there's another one pop up. It's big smiley face, big smiley face, big thumbs up. Absolutely, I've been using them for years. They're awesome. Check out their website at such and such. No, poke it. Bugger off and leave me alone. Why are they picking on me? That's what I don't get. Stupid little channel like this. We've got just over 10K subs. There are some massive channels out there. Go and hit them up. Go and pick on Matt, actually. I'd love to see what he does if you do that. <laughs> Can you imagine his response? Like that. Um, so I don't normally delete comments or anything else. They are getting reported for spam or unwanted commercial content or whatever it is they term it. They're the only comments that I'm getting rid of. But as soon as they're popping up, I, I'm, just, I'm trying to stay on top and just report them. And as I report them, they also disappear, they get pulled. Um, but if you see any of these, these comments, don't be clicking on links. I think it is just gonna take you to a website that is advertising their, you know, investment services or whatever. Um, thing is, if you if you're stooping this low, you know, to get business, then you can't be that good in the first place. But I don't know if you click on that link, something more sinister might happen. So just give it a wide berth if you see it. All these idiots going about how they've made their fortune on this particular website. Just ignore them, because you know. They're stupid. <laughs> anyway, I need to have a little bit of a tidy up, although that might have to wait until tomorrow as well, because I need to chip off and have some scoff before I go to my work. So that's where I'm going to leave it for this one. Um, I need to do an update and just let you know what's going on with the rest of stuff. So that'll be coming out. I'll probably do that tomorrow, actually. Um, and then the rest of the week, I'm just getting the rotary table out, getting these finished up and getting them on the bike. So at the weekend, I can have at that exhaust. I want to see the exhaust is going to look like. <laughs> but anyway, that's all I'm going to leave it for this one. Thank you ever so much for watching. I do hope you understand safe. We'll see you on the next one. Laters.